there are plenty of kingdoms in The Witcher that you could describe as being war-torn due to the effects of the Northern Wars. However, no kingdom has experienced this quite as literal as Sodom. But to get to that point in time, we first have to go back. Almost all the information we have on Sodom relates to the Northern Wars, mainly the first one. Presumably, the humans arrived in Sodom not long after they settled down near where now Temeria and Sintra lie, as this land is located right in between them. The land itself, after it was taken from the non humans that most likely lived there, became a land filled with farms, beekeepers, and small villages. The land itself spreads across the Yuruga, which divides the land into two parts. The southern part stretches from Sintra in the west to Riverdale in the east. Along the southern border of this land, you'll find the Ammo Mountains. The northern part of Sodom borders the kingdoms of Bruges and Temeria. Sodom and Temeria are pretty close to each other due to their royal families. The most recent king of Sodom was Eckehart of Sodom. When Eckehart was young, his father, named Katram of Sodom, who was the king before him, remarried and had a daughter named Sansia. Sansia, or Sankia, would eventually marry Medal of Temeria and would later have two children with him, Foltest and Ada. This makes the royal families of both Temeria and Sodom closely related to each other, as the king of Sodom is kind of the half-uncle of the king of Temeria. It is now that we get to the events of the First Northern War. The Nefgardian Empire swept across Sintra and shortly after turned its eye towards Sodom. This land would provide for a decent amount of space for Nefgardian settlers to move in, and thus they conquered the southern half of Sodom in what is known as the First Battle of Sodom. The First Battle of Sodom was a disaster for the north, as it was now only a matter of time until Nilfgaard would cross to the northern side of Sodom. In the meantime, refugees from the southern part of Sodom were trying everything they could do to get to the north, to get across the Yuruga and stay out of Nilfgaard's attempt in an attempt to stay safe and start a new life. However, they weren't even safe from Nilfgaard. On the other side of the Yuruga, as Nilfgaard invaded the northern half of Sodom by crossing the river. This time, however, the north was better prepared, and in an effort to stop Nilfgaard's advance, they faced off against them on a hill, named Kite Hill. You might know this hill by its nicknames, as it has received many over the years, like, for example, the Hill of the Fourteen, or Mage Hill. But among the most popular names is Sodden Hill. These nicknames were due to the Second Battle of Sodden, where on and around that hill fought 100,000 men along with 22 mages to keep the north safe and to stop Nilfgaard. It was the sacrifice and death of 14 out of the 22 mages that most people remember from these events. Even though on the same battlefield, 30,000 soldiers lost their lives, which is about equal to the population of the entire city of Novograd. But fortunately for half of Sodom, the north won the battle and drove Novograd back to the southern side of the Yuruga. The kingdom of Sodom was cut in half, literally torn in half by the war. The northern part remained a free state. The southern part, however, was less fortunate, as it was absorbed by the Nilfgaardian Empire and became a province of Sintra. Therefore, technically, Siri would have become the ruler of the people of Upper Sodom, as it was a part of Sintra, to which she was the sole heir, which would have also made her the queen of Milva, who came from Upper Sodom. And yes, it sounds weird, 
to call the southern part of the kingdom of Scroton Upper Sodden. The northern part became known at the same time as Lower Sodden. Why this is, I do not know. However, it might have something to do with either the northern part having less hills, or just that Upper Sodden was the northern part of the empire, and Lower Sodden was the southern part of the northern realms. Besides Sintra, which was devastated by the First Northern War, Sodden had a lot of rebuilding to do, as there were a large number of refugees that had entered Lower Sodden. It was at some point between the year 1263 and 1267 that another tragedy struck Sodden, as the king Eckhart died. He left no sons or daughters, and thus the free state turned their eye to the closest relative that he had, Voltest of Temeria. They approached the king of Temeria and requested him to become their king, which he of course accepted as anyone who wanted more power would do, resulting in Voltest becoming the king of both Temeria and Sodden. However, only half of Sodden was under Temerian rule, as the other half was still part of Sintra, which in turn was part of Nilfgaard. Sodden once again had to fight for its existence, when the Second Northern War started in 1267. This time, Nilfgaard pushed the north on multiple fronts. One of these fronts pushed their way into Lower Sodden, and for a short time, the entirety of the Kingdom of Sodden was in hands of Emir van Emreis. However, as you most likely are aware, the North won the Second Northern War at the Battle of Benna. Nilfgaard once again lost Lower Sodden. But not just Lower Sodden, as during the peace talks in Sintra that followed the Second Northern War, Temeria managed to get Upper Sodden back as well, reuniting both of the halves of Sodden. For a few years, Sodden was reunited, with Voltest as their king. However, when he was killed by Letho of Gullet in The Witcher 2, not only did it leave Temeria with no king, but also Sodden. As a result, Nilfgaard had the opportunity to quickly make their way through Sodden and Temeria, the two kingdoms that were meant to be a blockade against Nilfgaard's invasion attempts. With Voltest gone, Sodden became part of the Empire once again, and its fate, along with many other realms in the north, is up to Geralt of Rivia. Your decisions determine in which hands Sodden ends up. It could remain a part of Nilfgaard, or it could fall into the hands of a new northern empire, led by either Radevit the Stern or Sigismund Dijkstra. In the case that Nilfgaard is defeated by a Rodanian ruler during the Third Northern War, it would seem most likely the case that Upper Sodden would remain a part of Nilfgaard, as pushing armies across the Yuruga is somewhat more difficult to do, especially due to the amount of fort and fortresses that are built along it. One of these pushes would need a great army, and it's something that we only have ever seen Nilfgaard do. So it isn't something I would expect Radovid or Dijkstra to be able to pull off. When it comes to Sodden, we know very little about the kingdom itself. We even do not know what the capital of this kingdom was, as all the names of places that we have that are located in Sodden are either fortresses that were destroyed in the war, or small towns. Sodden seems like a nature actually was fleshed out further than just a land where a few large battles took place. We don't know much about the people who lived there either, as all we know is that they were a little bit taller than those of the nearby kingdoms, and they were grateful towards mages and not as hostile to witchers, due to how the mages had saved them during the Battle of Sodden Hill. Sodden is a land that I would like to see more fleshed out. For its location nearby so many well-known kingdoms, 
and lands. It is surprising how little we know about how the kingdom operates, what its history was, and what happened there before the Northern Wars. But what do you think about Sodom? Would you like to see it be more fleshed out? And for the kingdom to be made into more than just the location of many battles? If you have any suggestions for future videos, leave them in the comments below. Till the next video. Bye.